Hi, I'm about to go take care of my berry and I need to share with you the best berry you will ever grow in your garden if you have a tiny garden or you're in a balcony. This is an incredible berry that not many people grow and they need to grow it more. But first I want to talk to you about blueberries because there's a big difference between this berry I'm going to talk to you about, the honeyberries and these blueberries. We went to this beautiful farm that was a blueberry farm to pick them and it was incredible to see how they grow and it really helped me understand what I needed in my own garden. This was such a stunning place. Look at all these dahlias that they have. They grow food of all sorts and they also grow so many flowers. You have to grow flowers for those pollinators and they did such a beautiful job. It really was inspiring to go there. It made me want to get a much larger space, but I still love my little garden. Growing blueberries is really amazing, but for my little garden, you can see how these bushes get so large and they do provide a lot, but it wasn't realistic for my space. So if you have a balcony or an apartment, that you're living in or a small terrace, the honeyberry may be a better selection. Blueberries are going to take a lot more maintenance. These are amazing blueberries, but you have to maintain an acidic soil for, that, for them to grow really well. It will be critical that you test the soil and always make sure that it has the pH that it's going to need to have them give you as many berries as possible. Another challenge with the blueberries is that they do sometimes, depending on which one you get, will have some pest issues. And the honeyberry that I'm going to show you does not have to deal with that. And we'll talk a little more about that. I can't imagine a garden without being able to get some blueberries or any type of berries. It's, to me, it's just part of creating a homestead and you still can do it. So don't be discouraged because you may not have the space for some things that you want to grow. The solution I'm giving you is going to make you have so many berries and they're really incredible. Another challenge that I have here with blueberries is that the weather fluctuates so much. It just makes it really challenging for me to have any blueberries on pots. I want to be able to keep them outside. I don't want to bring them indoors. So blueberries was going to be something that I may not have been able to grow in my garden. First time putting blueberries. Look at all this. You guys, they're so sweet. Mm, they're incredible. This is so much fun. I'm so glad Harlan said to come over because this is like I could spend all day here. So I'm gonna go back to picking. If you're looking for the right berry to grow in your tiny space, you are going to be blown away by this berry that I grow and it is so easy to grow and incredibly delicious. So stick around and I'll show you everything that I need to do to take care of it once a year. The best alternative that I found was growing the honeyberries. This is an incredible type of honeysuckle and you need to grow a couple of them if you're going to grow them so you can get a ton of honeyberries. You can grow one, but two are going to do a lot better. The honeysuckle is so good, as I said, if you have a small space. You can see that white container that is the pot that I have both of them in. And I treat my honeyberry bush like a tree. So I keep it clipped so it doesn't take a bunch of space. And that way it allows me to plant things like narcissians or pansies under it to make it really beautiful for the season. That's part of what I'm going to be doing today is go ahead and add the soil I need to do to treat it and my fertilizer and adding some pansies. So we'll go through that a little later on the video. One of the main reasons that I also bought this honeyberry bush is that the temperatures here fluctuate like crazy. So we may have rain on stuff, then snow, then ice, then it's just a mess when it comes to the weather, especially the last three years. So I bought this one because I can keep it in a pot, treat it, and it gives me no problem. It's gone through so much and it's always just fine. I am amazed how easy it is because for me, 
having no maintenance is just important in the garden so I can keep up with everything so if you're going to have it these are some of the things that you may want to consider if growing it in your own space when you get your honeysuckle selected and we'll go through how to do that make sure that if you're going to plant them in pots which is the best way i treat mine like they're little trees and it's easy to maintain is to make sure you add really good container soil organic if you can some compost and our super thick layer of mulch make sure it doesn't have any dyes on it anything that is just not good for the plants so make sure you have it because this will help with the heat and the cold weather also with those few things that you do to get it started on a large enough pot make sure it is a really big container because the roots are going to get larger and i have it where it's a really deep container all you need is that and the plant will do great unlike other berries which i love growing strawberries and all sorts of other berries in my garden but I do go to a friend of mine to get blackberries and for the blueberries I go to a farm that is right next to where I live and I just don't want the extra work so some things I choose not to grow but the great thing about the honeyberry is that it does not need full sun you can have it in full sun or you can have it in partial shade and it will still give you berries which is totally unlike other berries berries are so incredible for your health so make sure that you pick one that you love and that you preserve enough of it for the winter but the one that has the most in antioxidants is the honeyberry it is so good for your health another reason that i love having them in my garden the biggest thing that got me to buy this berry and i did so much research is that it doesn't have any pest pressure and I have so many issues here with aphids and slugs and other things that I just don't want to have to deal with it. And this one doesn't have anything that's ever come after it. And as far as the birds go, I just place both of them in an area where it's active. It's where we sit. It's like little outdoor living room. And I've never had any issues with the birds getting it. So that's a nice little trick to do is have it on a high traffic area. If you have found value on everything that you've seen so far, would you please give it a thumbs up to support the channel? It really does help with the growth and for me to be able to post even more videos. There are some things that you need to keep in mind when selecting your honeyberries. You can have one if you want to and you still will get some fruit, but you're going to get a huge amount of fruit if you get two of them so they can pollinate and give you even more of a harvest the trick is that you try to find a local source i found someone in oregon on marketplace and looked very carefully at his website to see that he had experience on these and he told me which are the best two plants to put together and it comes down to the fact that they need to bloom at the same time if you're getting two of them sometimes they bloom in may other times they may bloom in and on june to july so make sure that if you get one they both bloom at the same time or it just won't help you in any way i mentioned that they can be in partial shade so you're still going to get the same amount of berries really that if they are not in partial shade i have one that gets partial shade and one gets full sun so don't worry if you don't have full sun eight hours a day as long as they get maybe four hours a day they will do just fine the only thing that i will tell you that is a challenge with the honeyberry is the sun if you have them in a place where they're going to get so much sun next to your strawberries or other berries make sure that it's not so hot because they will burn the leaves of the plant so it's okay to get full sun but when the summer really hits here in july i may have to move it because i think um, many times for the past couple of years they do get pretty burned they don't die or anything it's just that the leaves will get burned 
and uh, it may suffer just a little bit, but they do come back. Hi, if you don't know me, I'm Melba, and I am an urban gardener, home gardener, and I grow as much as I can in food and flowers. And if you're here because you're back, I really appreciate all the support that you've provided me the past couple of months since I started the channel. It's been incredible, and I have been really enjoying making the videos. Let me know if there's anything that you want to know about and I will continue to make videos to try to help with whatever I can with my experience. One thing that I could not believe is that these berries, they last for over 50 years. They're so hardy. There's just not much that can take them down. Part of what I'm going to do is on the base of it, after I treat it and get it all ready for the season, I'm going to plant these incredible petunias. I'm growing my own petunias, but they're not as big as this. Look how big these are. I just got these yesterday, and they're stunning. I want to get some color on them, on the berry bushes, because it will be a little bit before they bloom, so these are perfect. This is the fertilizer that I like. It's a 454. If you find a 555, 10, 10, 10, anything that's balanced so that it has enough for the growth of the leaves, the root, everything. It's fine for flowering, the middle number being flowers. You can go to my rose video and I have more about how these numbers work so you can learn what kind of fertilizer to use on your different plants. But I'm gonna use this one. It's fine if it's a little high in the middle is fine because that's for flowers and I do want it to flower anyway so that it gives me fruit. So the first thing I do is I'm going to put some of this but away from the main stem. I'm going to put it around like this. So stay away from the center. It's better to to keep it clear from the center of the root hole. And then the other thing, and it's because it doesn't need a lot of nutrition, so I don't want to hit it super fast near the root ball. I'm going to use the fish compost, and I also speak about this on that same video. This fish compost is what I use for all of my beds, and I love it because it has hardwood pieces in it. It has compost from fish from Alaska, uh, and also organic. Uh, compost. The thing about this is that the soil it has a lot of like hardwood in it so it acts like a mulch and you want to have a mulch on the tree and this way I don't have to add mulch. So just go ahead and add a layer of it. Another great thing on this kind of trees is that you can add some flowers. It's not going to be like the blueberries where you have to be so careful with what you plant on the base of it because if it's competing for the same nutrients then that's going to be a problem it's not going to do well so i am not going to put strawberries or anything like that but i'm going to put some pansies the pansies i showed you so that it dresses it up a little and look really pretty when it's all grown i had a pretty thick layer remember in july when it gets really dry here this will really insulate it Okay, I'm gonna go get the pansies and we'll add those. I think I'm gonna do three will be sufficient. These are pretty large. Look at the flowers, but the plants themselves, they're super healthy and they're very large already. So I'm gonna do three of them and that will look really pretty. Eventually when it gets warmer, I'll add some of the things in the center in between. But for now, these are gonna look gorgeous and it really helps it.
and there we go they're really beautiful they fill this up really nicely i will go ahead and add some other summer crops here some summer flowers and crops like the petunia superbissima and it will be beautiful pruning is important for them but it is not anything like the blueberry at all the only reason that is important is because I like to shape it like I said, like a tree. So you kind of cut the base and keep the top more bushy. But as far as pruning, if you want to prune it, you need to wait three years. Don't touch it because they say just leave it. And then when you see things like this that are crossing each other, go ahead and cut those. It's just like any other type of bush where if they scrape each other, the wood is going to die eventually. So go ahead and cut those. One thing you have to keep in mind is this type of honeysuckle, if you clip them, if you decide to prune them, it's fine for those that are crossing. My friend here is helping me. She is a fruit tree expert and she was teaching me how they're crossing and what to cut off. But if you want them to give you berries that year, make sure that you only cut the tips of those branches unless they're sick. The reason for this is just like hydrangeas, some hydrangeas, they bloom in all wood and the honeyberry also blooms in all wood. So do not over prune your honeyberry or you may not get much of anything that year. Once you have waited those three years, then not only prune away the ones that are dead, prune the little tips off, but also open the center up, just open the plant so that it can get some airflow. Because like any other type of berry, it does like to have some air circulation. It's best, I have this one honeysuckle next to the fence. It's always better to have it open in all sides. So my other honeysuckle is open all the way around. So here I'm cutting the little tip and that's all it takes for you to get the plant taken care of. If you have it open in all sides, it's going to do a lot better because the airflow will be better on the honeysuckle. But it still does fine. I just have to keep it pruned and make sure that it's doing fine in the location I have it. The last thing to keep in mind if you're pruning this is that you need to wait until it's completely dormant. I pruned mine in January when I knew for sure that it was dormant. You don't want to wait until the spring to do it. Always remember to keep living your dream in that small garden.